Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome. It's another episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, and I'm joined today by Lori Fetrick. Lori, thanks for being here. We're going to we're gonna start chatting in just a moment. Some of you, if you're watching, you might recognize her. If you're new to the show, please check out WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com. We've got a lot of good stuff going over there. All the episodes we've ever done, we do transcripts. We have links, photos. If you want to dig into an old episode, they're all there. So make sure you check that out. And of course, whistlekick.com if you want to see all the things that we're doing because we are much more than a podcast. Lori, thanks for making well, the time. Good morning. I should say morning because it's Cali time. But thank you, can, you for having you can, me. It, it is your, you're the guest. This is your episode. We can be on whatever time you're on. We'll call it morning. Absolutely. Beautiful. Sounds I could, good. If I had hair, I would... I would mess it up and, and we could call it bedhead. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing great. Yourself? Good. Very good. Yeah. Awesome. Now, do do we wanna do we wanna hit the hard point right away and and, and tell people why they might recognize you? Oh god, yeah. Let's okay. not let's well, not well, let's, let's not do leave it. them out of the loop. Okay. Otherwise All they'd right. be like, who is Lori Fetrick and why is she on your show? Well, <laughs> They might, they might ask that, but I, I think, you know, one of the things that, that's important to me as I have a conversation with someone is context, mm -hmm. right? And quite often, and, and we will start an episode with, how did you start training? But I think the more important context question is, how did you get started on TV? <laughs> Let's go there first and see where that takes us. Let's, let's go there. Um, interesting enough, I was an athlete my whole life. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, I started out playing softball when I was like in fourth grade. You know, um, went through high school. All I want to do is play varsity sports, basketball, softball, you know, volleyball. And I got out of there and I was like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? You know? So I started weight training and started bodybuilding mm -hmm. and started competing, actually. And um, there was one year I was getting ready to go to the nationals and I flipped on my television and all of a sudden I saw this program that I actually thought was the stupidest thing I'd ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that now. I can say that now. Although at the same time, I went, wait a minute. I can do this. Mm -hmm. I go, I'm an athlete. I can do this. And I looked at the girls they had on the show and I was like, okay, they're kind of athletic, a little muscular. Um, one of the girls I competed against, as a matter of fact, and that was Ray Hollett. And the show was American Gladiators. And um, I went and tried out. And long story short, I mean, it took me like three months of jumping through the hoops. And I was Some very literal, I, I imagine. Literally jumping through hoops, exactly. And um, I was fortunate enough to, out of 90 girls, I was the one they chose after three months of tryouts and interviews. And I mean, it's like one of those stories that you, you hear and you're just like, God, would that ever be me? Yeah. You know, actually chosen out of 90. But yeah, I put my head to the grindstone and I was just like, let's do this. And mm -hmm. that's how I got in television. I actually was ice on the American Gladiators for about eight to nine years. And that's a long time. In television, I, it is. Yeah. And, and, I, and I imagine... Especially that, now, today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I imagine that you were held to some pretty high standards, right? I yes. mean, you know, um, you don't have to look too far into conversations on Hollywood television movies and the double standards that often appear for men and women. So I, I'm guessing there's some stuff there. Uh, you had to stay in shape. You had to, I mean, I, I, I always assumed, and maybe, maybe you're going to blow up uh, a myth for me, but it looked real. Oh, no, it, it was seemed... very real. Okay. All right. Good. I'm glad. Yes. And so you had to progress in those skills while yes. maintaining all these other things. Was it as grueling as I imagine? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, and the grueling part was probably some of the different games that we had mm. that could very easily ruin your career very quickly. 
yeah. you know, by a torn ACL, uh, a, a break of a wrist, um, finger even. I mean, mm. little things. Yeah. I mean, that was like every single game that you went into, you had to think of these things and how do I play all out a hundred percent and yet keep myself safe? You know, there's a very fine line yeah. there. So, yeah. um, yeah, I, it, that's, that was the progression because my first year was all balls out, you know, it was just like, yeah, I'm just going to kick some ass and take make names. A name for and, yourself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then as the years went on, I was like, okay, well now I got to start protecting my body a little bit, you know? So, mm -hmm. and all that means is it, when a girl is coming, you know, full force, a hundred miles an hour in my mind towards me, I'm like, do I step out of the way <laughs> or do I just let her barrel into me and take that hit, you know, yeah. and possibly injure myself? Um, nine out of 10 times, I'll be honest, I took the hit, you know, <laughs> made for good TV. If exactly. Else. Exactly. But yeah, it was, um, it was a great ride an absolutely amazing ride. And I mean, you can get like all the behind the scenes, everything on that, on actually the documentary that we did on Netflix called Muscles of Mayhem. And it's a five part mm -hmm. series and it really digs deep into, um, you know, what, what happened and what went on and how we progressed through the years. Wow. One of the things that happens in, in the martial arts community is you, you get some some schools that are starting to incorporate more, I'm gonna call it prehab or you know, resilience-based stuff that threads through. I've had a number of friends who have been in the bodybuilding space, and it's you know, from the outside to people who don't know, it's a pretty unhealthy pursuit, right? It, it's a hundred percent aesthetics at the expense of a lot of other things. But I'm gonna guess as you went into more of the athletic side, being a former athlete. I mean, former isn't the right word, but being more heavily an athlete prior, did your training change? Did you start to embrace more of how can I make sure that that finger, that ACL, that those injuries are less likely? Um, it, we, well, a few things on that. Okay. I mean, you know, we, we learned, we had a, we had a trainer in the morning, like, so mm -hmm. we would come in do hair and makeup and then you went into the training room and I used to laugh. After hair and makeup? after uh, the training room the training room meant this hold on the training okay. room meant right. this right. I, would, I would walk in there and i'd see all the guys getting their ankles taped mm -hmm. or their fingers taped or their wrist taped. and i was like oh what a bunch of babies <laughs> you know what are you getting why are you taping all this shit and then i realized oh this actually helps prevent injuries you know so i started you know and that's why after hair and makeup you go and you sit on you know, the training table and they wrap your ankles and your wrists and your fingers, whatever you need. So I learned how to do that as time went on, you know, how to, how to somewhat prevent some type of injury. Okay. And what about the, let's say the skills side of things, right? Being strong is always good. Being fast is always good. Being taped or, or less injury prone is always good. What about the event specific stuff? Uh, I'll be honest. They just threw us on. Really? Yeah. There was no, they tested the game. Don't get me wrong. They tested it, but mm -hmm. they never said, here is how you win. Here is how you do this game. Okay. Um, they never did that. They'd throw us on, test it. Are you comfortable? Yeah, I think. I don't know. I guess we'll see. <laughs> Um, we only got a very little practice on the games, but see, here's the difference between me and a bodybuilder. I was an athlete, right. you know, so therefore I could adjust very quickly to the games and adapt very quickly. And most of the gladiators were athletes as well. They did bring in a few that were just bodybuilders. Um, and they couldn't move. They were a little slow, mm -hmm. you know? But um, overall, we were all athletes, so we kind of adjusted very quickly to these games, mm. and we realized how to get the upper hand. 
and I hate to say it, most of the time the upper hand was just being on television because we were used to it and we weren't nervous of the cameras right. compared to the competitors. All of a sudden they realized all these cameras were on them and they were like, oh, you know, kind of thing. So it was, you know, uh, we did have a small upper hand on that one. Okay. Was there any, I guess, off se- I would call it off season training? Were, were you going away saying, hmm, how do I prepare better for next season? Um, they actually, it's, it's interesting you say that there was one season that they, 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 the show actually decided to send us over to, um, the USC training grounds. Mm -hmm. They hired a trainer and I don't know if they thought we were getting slow or we weren't winning that much. I mean, we were, but they had a trainer and, and they had all these different, they were training things. It was just really bizarre, but Yes, we did, um, like, you know, they hooked something on our waist with a big, huge, you know, like bungee to where we had to run and pull it. And then I'll I'll never forget this. They had to stick our hands in these barrels of rice and just keep gripping. And it was like, what is this for? And I realized- That's school karate training right there. I was going to say, once my hands were in there and I was gripping after about literally 15 to 20 seconds, I'm like, whoa my forearms just started burning my hands and everything. I was like, okay, this is for my grip strength. This is for this, this is for that. Um, and then they had us put some like these, these booties on and they, and we were just, it was like a side to side, um, you know, kind of like little thing that was like six feet long and they were, you know, getting our legs like more strengthened, you know, um, inner thigh, outer, you know? So yeah, they started doing these things you know, in the off season to get us ready to be a little bit more competitive. And I think what they were doing that for is they were realizing they were going to bring in bigger and faster competitors. And so we had to be more prepared. You know, there are, there are, you know, comments out there that I hear all the time about the gladiators, not all the time, but, you know, they'd be like, oh, you know, I was, you know, for a guy, they were like, I was, you know, six, three, and I was fast. I was ripped. I was athlete. And they didn't take me because I was too big and too good, you know? And then sometimes Mm. I'd hear that from the women, you know, it wasn't that maybe you didn't have a good story. Maybe you didn't have a good look. Maybe you weren't right for television. So it wasn't that they didn't choose contestants that were big and strong and fast. They did. You know, and that kind of progressed throughout the years as well. Hmm. Okay. Now, of course, we are we are a martial arts show, and so you know that that rice, you know, a bunch <laughs> of the audience is going to say, "Yeah, yeah." And you know, however you want to look at American Gladiators, I mean, there were some at at least combat adjacent. I, I mean, there were events that I think of. You know, the the what do you call it with the big Q tip? Right? Joust. Joust. Jousting. Thank yeah. you. That's combat, right? That is yeah. directly applicable to so many of the things that, that a lot of traditional martial artists do, even if they're not using weapons. So what's your relationship to martial arts? Well, it's interesting because during the American Gladiator show, probably towards the tail end of it, we went into Orlando and mm-hmm. we did the Orlando Live, which meant that we actually performed and did the show at a dinner theater. And it was like the Knights and Warrior or uh, Medieval Times here in Mm. California type of show. So they brought in a lot of different trainers. And one of our trainers um, was very, I think he had his black belt Muay Thai. Mm -hmm. And so in during our days, because we only did the show at night, we only Mm -hmm. did it for two hours and the rest of the time we had free time. So Dave would come out and we would be doing Muay Thai and he was teaching us Muay Thai throughout, you know, our days. And that was amazing. And then we had another guy on set that was a, um, um, oh my God, why did I just lose the name? Taekwondo, Taekwondo um, instructor. So I started going to him, his name was Bruce, and I started going to him like three, four days a week and I wanted to learn katas. I wanted to learn 
everything. I wanted to do jump kicks. I wanted to do, you know, the, the spinning kicks, you know, all that kind of fun stuff. And at first I was doing it just simply because I wanted to learn these moves for possibly television and, you know, uh, different things that I could do fight scenes on television. As I got into it, I was like, wow, this is amazing. And I just fell in love with it. And we trained for a good solid, I would say, year. Um, so Dave was, you know, like I said, Dave was Muay Thai. Bruce was Taekwondo. And I would kind of flip back and forth a little bit on that, more, more towards Taekwondo. And I remember I, I have to, it's funny because when we started um, chit-chatting about the show, I was like, oh my God, I got to go back and find that footage because I know that I, I actually videotaped it. But again, it wasn't, it wasn't a videotape on this iPhone. It was a videotape on the handheld. So now it's like, where are those little tapes <laughs> you know, that I can go back and actually yeah. find them? Because I remember, um, I remember, I, I mean, I was, I got, I got good and I loved it. Absolutely fell in love with it. What did you love about it? The discipline. I loved the discipline. I loved, um, I loved the moves. I loved uh, the, uh, the athleticism in it. Mm. Um, challenging my body, pushing it to a different level. You know, not gladiator level, a different level. Right. You know, uh, actually, yeah, there's hand-to-hand -hand combat and gladiators, but this is different. Mm. You know, this is, this is you have to be smart. You have to think. You have to be prepared. And then, I mean, that's like the mechanical side of it. And after you get past that mechanical side of it, that it becomes automatic. That's, I was still, I was still really into the mechanical stage, of mm. course. Um, but I was working towards, I, I actually wanted to compete, you know. Um, I was really, I just loved everything about it. And then we left Orlando. Mm. Bruce stayed in Orlando. I came back to LA and I'll be honest, I looked, I looked for different instructors. And then, um, I ha I found another guy that did MMA fighting and wanted to teach me jujitsu. Um, so I kind of started playing around with that a little bit. So, yeah. and that was different. And, and that was, that was something I wasn't really into that too much. Mm -hmm. I really liked the Taekwondo more hand to hand combat kind of, you mm -hmm. know, thing rather than the jujitsu kind of part of it. So I've tried different, you know, different arts, different um, areas. And that, I have to say, that was one of my favorites. Although Dave was really adamant about teaching me Muay Thai. <laughs> you know? It's like, I'm, I, you, yeah, I'm going to teach you this Muay Thai. You're going to learn this and it's going to, you're going to love this later on, you know. So everything about it, you know, I, I loved it. I loved it. Nice. What are you, how do I ask this question the right way? Movement, if we, if we take zoom out, right? Movement has been a huge part of your life. What are you doing now for movement? <sighs> Mixing it up. I do. Yeah. In what way? I what just, tr just trying to do, uh, because I, I'm a, I'm a gym rat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm in the gym, I'm training, but I also know that my body gets used to things. When you do something over and over and over and over, your body will get used to it. Yep. And kind of designed that way. I mean, yeah, it's exactly. It's a good thing. So I try to mix it up. I'm, you know, I'm in their weight training. I'm, uh, I want to do hit training, you know, high intensity training. Um, I mean, mixing it up, heck going on a hike, to be quite honest with you is mixing it up for me, <laughs> you know? Um, I would, you know, it's interesting that you, we were talking about um, kickboxing because even if I go and take a kickboxing class and it's not traditional kickboxing, um, I still love it because mm. I'm using my legs. I'm using my, you know, my butt. I'm using the core. Everything about, you know, kickboxing to me is core and legs. Mm. <laughs> you know? So I love that. So I'm always trying to mix it up and, you know, do different things here. Sometimes I'll just hire a personal trainer and let's say, you know, Taekwondo and say, okay, let's go. 
you know, rather than going into the classes. And mm-hmm. I mean, I, that's me. I, I, I wish I didn't have the impatience, but moving up in the ranks constantly, <laughs> you know, it's like, this is going to take forever, you know, and then I'll just go hire a personal one <clears throat> and let's see what there we can do with this. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I also spend a lot of time in the gym probably not as much as you, but it's something that I, I do really enjoy. And, and the biggest difference with between martial arts and the gym is if, if I, if I'm doing, you know, if I'm squatting or whatever, there's, there's, there is function internally to that, but martial arts is externally functional, right? If mm-hmm. I, if I squat and I do it, you know, maybe off a little bit, it only hurts me, you know, with my progress, but if my techniques, my kicks are wrong, my blocks are wrong, I could really get hurt, right? It's a oh, whole absolutely. different way of approaching movement. And, and, and that just kind of struck me mm-hmm. with, with, because there, there's, you could say that also about athletics in general, right? Like if you said soccer player, you know, you're not just kicking the ball, you're kicking the ball to a specific location. Right. It matters. Absolutely. It matters. Every, every movement you do matters. Yeah. You know? And our bodies, um, our bodies are fascinating. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm always so fascinated with our body and our recovery time and, you know, different things. I mean, yeah, if I, if I left the gym today and started a, you know, into kickboxing, I would be more sore than I've ever been in the gym Mm. in the last year, because now I'm using muscles in my body, excuse me. Now I'm using muscles in my body that I'm not used to, you know? So it's a whole different ball game. And and I actually love that. Mm. Yeah. The variety, the variety is good. You know, you can't, one of the things we talk about on the show is the notion of growth or progress or however you want to term it. And Mm -hmm. if you get comfortable with something, you're not going to progress at it anymore. Right. And that's, that's that's just life, isn't it? It is. It yeah. is. It's uh, most of the examples I use when I, when I talk about those concepts are out of the gym. Mm-hmm. You know, if I'm used to hundred pounds, I've got to go to a 105. Otherwise yep. my body's not going to be uncomfortable. It's not going to develop. It's not going to grow whatever I'm trying to get it to do. It's like, get, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Exactly. Exactly. So after gladiators, you know, nine years, like we said, kind of a long time, uh, I'm sure you were getting recognized all over the place, you know, rather an, an iconic look to you, <laughs> uh, at least at that time. What was next? I'll be honest. I didn't Where did know. you take that? I, 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 after Gladiators, it was interesting because I had put so much of my life into that character. Yeah. And it just... I mean, to be honest, it just flew by Mm -hmm. that eight, nine years just flew by. And I didn't necessarily, I I think at that point in time, I was thinking, okay, and that's, that's why the training and martial arts and the fight scenes and everything, I wanted to go into television and movies and, and do, you know, not stunt work. I wanted to do my own stunt work. I wanted to do my own fight scenes. Mm -hmm and work with choreographers and everything. And then right at that time, you know, timing is everything. Right at that Mm -hmm. time is when television went, all we want is reality shows. Mm -hmm. And they took away a lot of the drama shows, the comedy shows, the action shows. And they went all, I mean, all, like every single channel he turned on was a reality show of some sort. And they didn't want- Yeah, they, yes, exactly. They didn't want anyone that had already been on television. They wanted Mm. the average Joe. So it was very hard to get any work in the Mm. industry at that time. So I had to do switch, pivot and go, all right, this is what I need to do now. And that was, I opened up, uh, I opened up a gym in Orlando, Florida. We were already there from the live show. I found mm-hmm. my investor there and um, it just, it took off and it was a pretty big gym in downtown Orlando. And so I opened that business and then I hold, I held it for about four to five years. I'm not a Florida girl. 
So I, I'm not really keen on the whole humidity and all that. And I'm, I'm, I'm a California, LA girl, so I miss the mountains. I missed everything like that. So after about five years, I realized I could sell the gym. I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to give it up. I just wanted to hold it until I sold it. And so I sold mm -hmm. it at five years, came back to California mm -hmm. and believe it or not, I opened up another business and that just started the ball rolling as far as like, wow, I really enjoy opening businesses, building mm -hmm. them up. And then after five years, I'll turn around and sell them. So what I did that, uh, a tanning salon <laughs> of all things, okay. okay, of all things, a tanning salon here in LA, because I realized in the business, it's like, you know, in the entertainment industry, people like to, at that point in time, they're like all about, you know, having their golden tans and everything else, mm. but they didn't have the time to go to the beach and, and do that whole sunbathing. It's like, I need 10 minutes, get in, get out. You know, I was like tanning salon. Oh my God, this is beautiful. So I did that for five years, turned around, sold that, and then went into real estate. I started doing business is what I started doing. And although the entire time, man, I missed, I missed the entertainment industry. And I kept thinking, and I'm not even joking, mm. all those years, it's been 30 to 35 years since we did Gladiators. And even all the way up to five years ago, I kept thinking and feeling there's something missing. There's more out there. I'm, I'm destined to do more, you know, and I never let that fire inside me die. I kept looking and I kept, you know, cause sometimes you just got to create it yourself cause it's not going to come around. Um, and so when the Netflix documentary came out, it kind of resurged the brand again, the name, and it just kind of took off, mm. you know, like a small little wildfire. And I'm just absolutely enjoying this moment and enjoying the ride and, and really being in the moment this time. You know, I was in the moment back then. But, you know, when you're young, you're yeah, like, you feel as though it's, gonna it's gonna never going to end. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. it's going to be here forever, you know? So this time around, it's like, it's, I know it's not lasting forever. So now it's like every moment, ev this whole entire journey of building, mm. it's like building something has been phenomenal, you know? And I'm just so grateful. And it's not all these things are coming to me. I'm out there creating them this time. Right. And, and it's funny you pick that word because that, that was the word I was just about to use. That's the thing that I'm seeing in common. You know, as an athlete, you're creating skill. Mm -hmm. you're, you're investing your time and your energy and often your money to cultivate that skill, to improve it, to make it what it is. As a bodybuilder, I mean, you're doing the same thing with your body. I mean, yes. anybody who's spent any time in the gym knows that there is an art to it. It's If it was an exact science, anybody could be huge all the time, but it's not that's not how it works. You have to push yourself and push your body even when something's not happening. Yeah. Because that's where it's like you have to be prepared for when that opportunity comes along. Mm -hmm. And I was very fortunate. And speaking of opportunities, um, I've never quit training. That, you know, throughout my entire career, even when gladiators ended, I never quit training. I kept pushing, kept pushing, kept pushing. And it actually has paid off. And that's what's so cool about it. So, and what I mean by that is I just signed an endorsement deal with V Shred. Oh, cool. And I mean, it came very organically. You know, it, it wasn't like I went out and seeked, you know, kind of thing. It was like I was having dinner with a friend of a friend and he happened, Vince Sant happened to be there. And we just hit it off. And I was like, mm. your program is brilliant. It's simple. It's easy. You took out all the BS, you know, for people. And next thing I know, we have a Zoom meeting. Next thing I know, I have an offer on the table. Cool. And if I hadn't been prepared yeah. and I had quit, I would have never had this opportunity. And so I, I'm a very big advocate about that. Yeah. You got, you have to stay ready, right? 100%. Whether we're talking about sport, whether we're talking about creative pursuits, whether we're talking about business, which is where I spend most of my time, mm -hmm. 
those opportunities, if you're not ready to capitalize on them, they go to somebody else. Yes. You know, you probably weren't going to have that Zoom meeting and say, hold on. Uh, oh, you, you need me to be in this way to show up like this. Yeah. Give me 12 weeks. It's 12 weeks. Give me six months. <laughs> you know? I've, I've just given you a lot of credit. Right? Thank you. <laughs> there are plenty yeah, of no, you're right. There, you know? and, and you see that and you, you see people, whether, you know, we're, I think most of us are used to the anecdote of a crash diet to get ready for something. But a lot of people approach all of their life that way. And, you know, one of the things... Isn't that mind-blowing? It, it is. It is. And, and I've been talking about this a lot lately. It keeps coming up in conversation, this idea of discipline being everything. Mm-hmm. And where does discipline come for me? It's, it's through my martial arts training. And mm-hmm. everything is about discipline. You know, your, your episode, like 930, whatever. Yeah. Well, I was really bad at it early on. I didn't stop. I just kept going. I trusted that it would get better like everything else that everyone does you start mm-hmm. terrible and you get better but you have to have that layer of discipline in there so man and that's hard because that first layer of discipline is the hardest to get through but man once you pass through that layer you know and it is layers it's interesting yeah. that you said it. it's layers um and in in fitness it's the same thing you're absolutely right people are like you know, I got to get ready for summer. I got to get ready for a, a, a wedding, an event. It's like, why don't you make fitness your lifestyle? You know, why don't you just be that disciplined person on or have that little discipline for the, you know, the first week, two weeks, start slow, mm-hmm. you know, but give yourself 30 minutes to 45 minutes a day to do something and to move, you know, be mm-hmm. disciplined on not eating that snicker bar and maybe grabbing an apple instead. <laughs> <You know? laughs> there are so many different layers of the discipline. And, and it's interesting. Let's get back to the martial arts for a second. And that is, that's one of the reasons why I loved the martial arts and love the martial arts industry. Mm-hmm. Even starting out as, I mean, my girlfriend has um, a son. He's, he's 17 now, but he was in my life at three Mm. and the first thing that she said, I'm getting him in the martial arts because it taught him discipline, you know, and it's, and it's not just handing your child over to, you know, a sensei per se, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's teaching the kids discipline. It's teaching them um, respect. It's teaching them a lot of things that they're not getting either at home or in the school system. Right. Right. It is. I find myself saying that the way traditional martial arts is trained in most schools is the antidote to just about every problem that we have today. Mm-hmm. You know, whether you talk about the, the physical issues, right? Mm-hmm. The average person walks for in, the, in this country walks 4,000 steps a day mm-hmm. and two thirds, three quarters are overweight. Right? Oh yeah. Martial arts helps with that. I'm not saying solves it, but it helps it. Or we're talking about psychology and mental health, right? Martial arts helps with that. There's no thing that I know that helps with more aspects of where we are deficient as a society than traditional martial arts, which is why I'm so passionate about the things that we do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can tell you're 984 (laughs) episodes in. Just just keep going. Just keep going. You know, this is- keep it going. I mean, it's like we're- what do they say about TV? You know, don't go past a hundred episodes. Oh, I don't even know. I've never I've even heard, heard that. I've heard that kicked around before. I ignore most advice, at least that kind of advice. Just keep going. <laughs> I mean, I'm only so what? you. Go ahead. Well, keep going. Keep going. You're, no, you're go leading ahead. me in where I was going to go anyway. No, go for it. Go for it. You you go. You were about to say you're eighty something episodes in on your yes, show. Yes, yes. Only eighty. I mean, oh, God, I feel like such a baby. Only. <laughs> you know, eighty is a lot. But like People you said, don't understand before, how much time yeah. it takes. Well, exactly. How much time it takes? How to get your guests? How to promote it? I mean, there's a lot involved. You know, and usually, let's be honest the first 100, 200, 300, I don't know, are all out of your own pocket, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know? 
it's like, do you, do you have a studio in your home? Do you go rent one? I mean, it's like all these variables. Do you do your own editing? Do you hire an editor? I mean, it's insane. Mm -hmm. You know, what goes into these podcasts. So, I mean, much, much, much respect to you that, you know, you're, you're in the nine hundreds. I can't even imagine every, every probably once a month. I'm like, why am I doing this again? <laughs> I love it. I do love it. it though. You've probably had the experience that, I, that I've had, and you've probably had it in a, in a few different ways where you, you meet someone and they feel like they have a connection with you mm -hmm. because they know a bit about who you are, whether it's from, you know, TV or podcast, or maybe they read a book or whatever, they feel like they have a relationship with you. And you can have a very interesting conversation. And it is an interesting conversation, especially if you don't know who they are. I was once recognized by my voice at a martial arts event, which is, is an absolutely surreal moment. They're like, you're Jeremy. Yeah, yes, yes, I am. Yeah, and exactly. we had a really interesting conversation. Actually, I, know, I became friends with this person and, and still know who they are. But what we do is a lot harder than than it looks on the outside. People just, you know, they get in the car, they wash their dishes and they listen to us and they assume that we're being as casual about it as they are listening. Mm -hmm. But the reason that you all out there can be casual is because we're not. There you have it. There's a it's, lot on the other side. <clears throat> it's, um, there was something that Justin Timberlake said one time that it has stuck with me. Somebody goes, you make everything look so easy. He goes, because I have 10,000 hours behind me making sure that it looks easy to you, you know, but don't get, he's like, don't get me wrong. I have put 10,000 hours into this, making it look easy. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's podcasting is a whole nother animal, but here's the other thing, as you were talking, I was listening. And the other thing that came to mind was I get to meet so many cool people that if I did not mm. have my podcast or I wasn't guesting, you know, a guest on somebody else's podcast, I mean, this is awesome. You know, we're across the country from one another, you know, mm -hmm. and if we didn't have podcasting, I'd have never had this experience to sit down and talk no. with you and talk about no, martial no. arts and the disciplines and everything that moves, you know, comes into this. And that's the fascinating, amazing part about it. What you, you, you mentioned the Netflix documentary, giving you some opportunities, some attention that wasn't there, you know, for the, in, in the, the years prior, how else are you capitalizing on that? Mm. What are I've, those opportunities? I have a children's book coming out called Playground Warriors. <laughs> okay. <What? laughs> That's going to be cool. That should be coming out that in about 30, about 30 days. Was that and your idea? Yes. That's brilliant. Yes. I love yes. that. Um, it's it, me and my manager came together and it was like, okay, so um, let's put this children's book together. And mm -hmm. it, it is hard nowadays to find a publisher. So we said, screw it. We're going to self-publish it ourselves. Yep. Self-publishing it, getting it out there. We'll get it into, you know, different, you know, stores and libraries. But the cool thing, which I'm very excited about too, is the animation that's following it. We're going to have a children's animation following it. We're going to have our, we have our YouTube channel and it's mm -hmm. called the Playground Warriors. And we have an IG called the Playground Warriors. And now it's more about, and it, right now it's from ages four to seven. Mm -hmm. And the animation's about exercise and playing, um, you know, outside and getting the kids off their tablets and their phones and let's get back to movement. Let's get back to, you know, having fun, you know, however it may be. If it's not outside, if they have the luxury of going outside, let's say, um, you know, we're, we're doing, you know, teaching them like little things like jumping jacks, sit-ups, push-ups, whatever it may be, just to move, jump mm -hmm. around. And at the same time, probably educating the parents a little bit on, you know, the nutritional side of things. Hey, maybe let's, you know, stop with a lot, a lot, all the sugary cereals. Mm -hmm. Kids are going to hate me for that because of the fact that I loved them when I was a kid. My mom wouldn't let me eat the they sugary cereals. They were made cereals. differently back then. Yeah. You know, Our so, sugar cereals are not the t today's sugar cereals. Oh, it's, they're terrible. They're mm -hmm. absolutely the worst thing that kids would be putting in their body. So that's going to be a lot of fun, that animation, you know, following the children's yeah. book. 
And I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a series of the children's book. There's going to be at least five of them. And again, it's about all about movement, all about, you know, having fun outside. It's about, you know, camaraderie. It's about team building. It's Mm. about confidence. It's about, you know, those types of things, again, that they're not learning in school anymore. And, and the parents nowadays, if you think about it, I mean, you can't survive in this day and age without two working parents, you know? So it's not like when I was raised, my mom was at home. She raised us. My dad worked, Mm -hmm. you know, that was it. Now it's like there are two working parents. So maybe the kids aren't getting a lot of the attention that we did when we were kids. So I'm hoping, you know, this is my hope is the children's book is going to be maybe like a, um, a, a go between the parents and the kids to where they can read to the kids or the kids can start reading and have some of this, you know, I, I, I don't want to say I'm educating, but yet, but yes, younger. at the same time, I'm motivating, <laughs> motivating and inspiring them to do yeah. something. Yeah. The, you know? the two often go hand in hand. Yeah. So the children's book that's going to be happening with the animation, um, the, the other thing is we have something called the Muscles of Mayhem Tour. And there's, it's, it's more of an intimate tour, like four to five gladiators. Okay. And it's going to be a meet and greet VIP packages, um, also with um, audience participation. No, we're not jousting one another. Oh, it's man. not we're hitting the floor. I mean, can you imagine the liability and the insurance on that right now? Yes. <laughs> and I would pay a lot. There you can say it. See, maybe we do that. I don't know. (laughs) You know, it's like somebody coming up from the audience who wants to joust dice. But then again, I don't want to be hit in the face again anymore. So, (laughs) You'll find your helmet. I've I've got my helmet, believe it or not, still from back in the day. Do you really? (laughs) Yeah, I do. I do. And I look at it now and I laugh and I'm like, this is just a big, huge football helmet, (laughs) you know? But um, yeah, there's, and so there's Muscles of Mayhem, um, the children's book, The Playground Warriors. Mm -hmm. Uh, Muscles of Mayhem, by the way, there's a website called Muscles of Mayhem Live. And that's where people can go. Our our first, we're starting on the East Coast. So it's Toronto, it's uh, New York and Pittsburgh. And then we're adding, 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 adding dates. And we're talking venues of maybe like a thousand people. So it's not ginormous. You know, know? we we drop this stuff in... In the show notes, of course. Yes. Um, and you know, we'll, and anything you want us to plug in there, we'll we'll do Thank that. You. But I'm I'm writing this down for myself. I'm gonna see if I can get, if I can make it to one. <laughs> there you go, it's exactly. Like a, like a trip. So I mean, there's it's and then there's possibly and this is where my my fingers are crossed big time right now, and that is um, the American Gladiators are rebooting again. They're gonna do the show again, and uh, the UK just rebooted their show. This is the okay. third time they rebooted. So they just got done. So what we're what they're doing here in the States is they're looking for gladiators, they're looking for contestants, but they're gonna film it over in the UK because the set's already there. Okay. The games are already there. They don't have to create them here, which is gonna mm. save them millions of dollars. Yeah. So what I'm crossing my fingers on is that I wanna be like a, a you know, commentary somehow, you know, whether it be between the gladiators, the gladiators and the contenders, I would love to host the show, but apparently they're looking for an A-lister and apparently they don't think that I'm the A-lister, <laughs> you better, know, who better to host it than you? Come on, dude. I mean, Come you're on. preaching the choir right now. Everybody's the same way. They're like, oh my God, you and Nitro would be amazing. At hosting. Yes. So maybe if they, maybe if the rock passes or somebody like that, then they'll go, well, maybe who knows, but yeah, we're, our, well, our names you know are in the hat. <laughs> it's not the rock you have to worry about. It's Kevin Hart. Oh, cause, cause he'll grab anything. Oh, I know. Can you imagine? That would be so funny. Um, actually it might actually add some comedy to it. Which Can you imagine really Kevin funny. Hart interviewing, right? Like I, I'm trying to think about the gladiators this guy's be like, Yeah. Yeah. So they, they need are... to get him a step school. <laughs> Exactly. That's funny you say that. You're absolutely right. So those are the things I'm trying to capitalize on right now, you know, um, and just seeing where it goes, you know, everything. It's like, again, like we were talking layers, you know, one thing's going to, you know, the V shred, the V shred ads aren't out yet. And I mean, this just happened like, you know, I don't know, two months 
And I just went out and up to Vegas and shot a whole bunch of ads with events. And so those are going to be hitting. So apparently I'm going to be in every household in America who has, you know, any type of, you know, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, because all the ads are on there. So you'll start seeing me on there, you know, which is going to be a lot of fun. And that's going to lead to something that'll lead to something. Yep. And that's what I'm looking forward to. That's awesome. Tell, Tell us about your show. Tell us about your podcast. Uh, chilling with ice. It's, it's evolved just like I'm sure 984 episodes in yours has evolved. My don't, first, don't go listen to the first hundred episodes. <laughs> my, my first episodes actually were, um, again, yes, they were rough. They were raw, but I was interviewing the gladiators, mm. which was really cool because I hadn't, some of these people I haven't talked to in 30 years. Yeah. So it's like, Hey, you know, what'd you do after gladiators? What are you doing now? You know, let's talk about behind the scenes, what we were doing on the bus and, and how was your tour experience and, you know, all these different things. So we got to reconnect Mm. and that was amazing. And that's, that's how the show started was I wanted to interview all the gladiators and, and some of the contestants and it just took off, you know, so many say no, no, they all said yes. Yeah. That's great. Um, Some of them I haven't. Okay. So. I haven't gotten no's. Some of them just don't answer my calls. <laughs> Is that the same thing? I'm kidding. <laughs> no, no, it's not because it makes you feel better because I know exactly what that is. There are, there know. are people, yeah. there are people it's been like, Hey, you should come on the show. Like, yeah, we should do that sometime. Uh, and you never hear from them again. <laughs> um, I mean, to be honest with you though, it's like, for instance, the one, a couple of people I haven't had on the show, and that's simply because I don't th- really think they want anything to do with gladiators any longer. And that's mm. jazz. Jazz mm-hmm. is one of them. Jazz is, uh, I forgot what season she was in, but she was amazing. Mm-hmm. She didn't do the documentary, any of the documentaries. She didn't do that. She just didn't want to be part of it any longer. So she wasn't involved. Um, Sky, Sky hasn't been on my podcast. Her and I kind of have a small little falling out. Um, but I'd love to get her on my podcast. So jazz and sky, but let's see who else. Um, really, I want to say those are almost the only two that that's that's pretty good. Yeah. Out of all the gladiators and then some of the gladiators, I just, you know, I mean, some of the alternates, maybe Mm -hmm. I just wasn't really interested into having, you know, that's all. (laughs) It's it's gotta be interesting. You've gotta be engaged. Yes. And so it went from that. And then I started signing at comic cons, Mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, the more I got out there, the more comic cons were like, oh my God, let's have you sign. And that was amazing. And I love doing comic cons, um, autograph signings. And so I started meeting like a lot of cool celebrities at the comic cons. And so then I started asking them, Hey, I'd love to have you on my podcast. Um, Mm -hmm. so therefore they started coming on my podcast and then, um, obviously, the more I got into the whole fitness world again, meaning I never left the fitness world, but getting a little bit more in depth, like, you know, mm-hmm. having a nutritionist on. Uh, yesterday, one of my guests, um, amazing, he has his PhD um, in nutrition science. So getting him on the show and picking his brain. Mm-hmm. So it's evolved, you know, talking to anti-aging doctors. I had my personal anti-aging doctor on my podcast for females, you know, females over 40, they're going through hormonal changes. How do you navigate the waters through that? Mm. You know, nutrition, fitness, you got to move. What do you do? So it's evolved in all these areas, you know, and I think it's just, yeah, exactly. And, and again, if you're not, that goes right back to what we said. If you're not changing and being uncomfortable in the position you're in, you're not progressing, you know, and some of these are uncomfortable, but I I keep pushing through because some of them I'm like, Ooh, I know I'm, I'm not too familiar, let's say in this area. And I don't, I don't want to sound like I'm not (laughs) experienced in this area. Um, so some of those conversations are a little uncomfortable, but it's okay. I'm like, let's just keep moving on, Mm. you know? Uh, sure. It's been it's been a great. I love my podcast. It's a lot of fun. I really do. Good, good. 
Well, hey, if you if you ever want to have a, a guy who's never been on TV, okay, come on. Yeah. Um. Hey, call me sometime and uh, we'll chat. <laughs> That one was good. That's good. That's <laughs> that good. was good. That's good. Uh, the audience is like, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have to. They don't. That one's just for us. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So given that there's evolution, that you're progressing, you're, you're embracing discomfort for the sake of growth, what are you looking out towards? What are you looking forward to? What's next on the horizon? What do you hope for? Goals? However you want to phrase that. Talk about future. Mm. I want to inspire as many people as I can with my life here on this earth to better themselves in some way and take care of the one body we have. Take care of it. It's yours. It is something that you have complete control over 100 percent and if i can inspire and motivate people to move move i don't care if you're exercising indoors outdoors um, i don't care what you're doing uh, whether it be hit training whether it be a bodybuilder whether you're doing martial arts i don't care just move and take care of your body um because as you know, like you just, you said it earlier, and that was our society, you know, what they're putting in our foods are so, it's bad, it's terrible. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you look back on a photo of Woodstock, let's take, I mean, what was that, early 70s, late 60s, or something like that. You look in the crowd, the sea of the mass of people. I'm going to say maybe you'll find 5% overweight. 5%. Now it's the reversal. Now you're seeing 95% of the people, yeah. it seems like, overweight. And if you think about back then, there you, weren't you any big box gyms. Right. I saw a side-by-side -side today of a, a beach from the 70s and today. Yeah. And that comparison, I mean, it's just, it's... It's insane, isn't it? It, it, it seems like it's a different planet with different, a different species. I would like to know, you know, everybody has their own take on it, why that is, you know, and I keep going back to the food source. Mm -hmm. I don't think people have gotten lazier. I really don't, you know, and a lot of people will blame it on that. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, there are, there are, okay. There are certain situations and incidents. Like I said, now there's two working parents and mm -hmm. maybe they don't have the time but you can always make time. But my big thing is that I keep going back to the food industry, what they're putting in our foods now, um, the saturated fats, the, the fructose, the, uh, mm -hmm. the sugars. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. What were you going to say? <laughs> if, if you, if you want to trip out, because we, we, we have enough data, we can look at the rollout of high fructose corn syrup in different countries. Mm -hmm. And you will see that there is a lag and a direct correlation with obesity and cancer rates. That after enough time, boop, boop, you can see it. It is, it is the, the single, I'm not going to say it's the only reason, mm -hmm. but is, it is the, rarely is there a simple thing we could do to make a big change banning high fructose corn syrup in this country is a single thing we could do. Yeah. But then what do. would all the pharmaceutical companies make? How would they make their money on all their drugs? I know I'm right so, there. So audience, if, um, if, if, if we, we aren't around in a day or two after, <laughs> after posting this, I'm not going to, I'm not going to speak for you. I didn't do it. I didn't choose that. You're so funny. I could see we're on the same page on a lot of things here. <laughs> For sure. For sure. It's funny you say that. And um, 
Oh, I'm not even go. I'm not even going there. I'm not even going there. We should, I'm not even going. Pro- we should probably <laughs> stop before we give them enough exactly, ammunition. So if, exactly. So if people want to get a hold of you, if they want to find you, give give us all the stuff. Give us the socials, the websites. Give uh, us all of it. My website is lauriefetrick.com, and mm-hmm. it has all my appearance dates on there. What I've done. What's upcoming. Um, the Playground Warriors, the children's book is on there, the Muscles and Mayhem Live. Um, that's all on my website, lauriefetrick.com. However, let's go back to the socials. My social media, uh, lori.ice.fetrick. That's my social media on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook, actually. Um, the Playground Warriors, we have our own website for that, it's on YouTube. It's on IG, and then we have the Muscles of Mayhem Live.com as well. So that's pretty much to cross the board with everything that I've got going cool. on. And I know that you said, where is this leading to? I'm just open. It's like the universe is, mm. I mean, I'm right there. I'm connected with the universe, the energy flowing in and out. And I'm, I'm just, you know, it's kind of like I'm doing my thing, keeping busy, keeping moving. And it's just, you know, keeping my eyes open to what's happening and what's happening next. Hmm. That's great. I'm going to throw it to you to close in just a moment, but to the audience, make sure you check out all that stuff, right? Like I, I know most of you are, are my age ish. You remember American gladiators. Ish? I like that. <laughs> So make sure you're checking this stuff out. Make sure you're following Lori and, and you're seeing what she's doing. And and as an aside, when that book comes out, when that's ready, make sure you give us links to stuff because we're going to promote that because that's an amazing project. Oh, really it's on pre-sale. I mean, if you go to, I know we froze there for a second, but if you go to theplaygroundwarriors.com, it's on pre-sale. It is going to be out in about 30 days, but yes, there is pre-sales on theplaygroundwarriors.com. Okay. Oh, awesome. Awesome. We'll make sure we get that stuff in. Awesome. How do you want to close today? What, what do you want to leave the audience with? Oh, um, I just really wanted to thank you for having me on the show. It's, um, I'm super impressed and much respect to you. Um, everything that you're doing, the, the whole martial arts industry is amazing and I absolutely love everything about it. And I just want to say thank you. I mean, I don't know any other way to close your show except, you know, again, much props. Thank you so much.